Well, it's that time again to talk about another classic episode of Doctor Who. Uh, continuing with the second Doctor Adventures, played by Patrick Troughton. And uh, once again, <laughs> uh, obviously I like the Cyberman. So uh, <laughs> this, the, <laughs> the few episodes of Troughton that I have, uh, and the majority of them are Cybermen adventures and they were the new kids on the block at the time so but this one uh is interesting and perhaps i missed it perhaps it's explained elsewhere i don't know but this one is a bit interesting here uh, it's invasion it's very long probably too long but not in the sense that uh episodes became repetitive it it, it constantly moves forward within its narrative and uh, basically, uh, once again, carrying over from a previous episode, the TARDIS is in trouble again, but uh, the Doctor uh, uh, writes the ship, but then they're suddenly attacked by a mysterious spacecraft on the moon, and they escape to the Earth, where they're menaced by a cow. <laughs> and in this one, the Doctor leaves the TARDIS invisible. Uh, and as far as I know, I don't know if that he ever did that again, but anyway... So uh, they hitch a ride, and then they come across this mysterious company town situation <laughs> and uh, meet a guy who later was revealed to have been a unit agent. Unit is officially uh, realized and formed here, and we get the return of Lethbridge Stewart, who is now advanced in rank to brigadier. And there you go. He is now the brigadier. And we're seeing the groundwork laid for what's to come for the Pertwee series and so on and so forth. And still, the Brigadier is not quite the Brigadier he is in the regular series. Because uh, even when his initial introduction, he pretty much just accepts what the Doctor says <laughs> and goes along with it, whereas later on, he uh, often doubts the Doctor uh, uh, and uh, it takes a while to be convinced of this and that and all that sort of thing. But anyway, here he is, his second appearance, and uh, fully realized at this point because you can see they're setting it up for the next Doctor and uh, how things will go forward there. Now, uh, also, of course, the Cybermen come back, and here we have a uh, villain uh, who is a bit of a traitor to humanity. He's this uh, giant uh, uh, corporation. <laughs> Where have we seen that plot before? <laughs> and uh, he's setting up the Earth for an invasion by the Cybermen, and uh, both are uh, stabbing each other in the back in the sense that he's plotting to just, he wants to control the world himself. And uh, the, the idea is the Cybermen said, oh yeah, you can have the Earth. We just want its, uh, some of its access to its resources and minerals and whatnot. And said, oh yeah, 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 we can do that. When in truth, no, the Cybermen want to invade and convert whatever humans they see, deem worthy to be Cybermen themselves and the rest will slaughter. And uh, he's trying to outwit them where he can use their power to take over the world and then get rid of them. So uh, he has a scientist that can develop a machine that can project emotion onto people, uh, uh, most uh, typically a fear, and uh, to do that to the Cybermen uh, would, would destroy them because they've eliminated emotion in order to be Cybermen. And this is a subject matter that came up later in New Who, or Doctor Who Volume 2, however you want to put it, uh, where that became the weakness for the Cybermen, where they had uh, you know, like a, an emotion inhibitor, and when you uh, either turned that off or burned it out or whatever, their emotions would come back, and with emotion, you couldn't stand your existence as being nothing but, you know, a brain in a bucket. <laughs> so, uh, so they go insane and uh, want to die and all that sort of stuff. So uh, here, all the way back here in Invasion, you see this happen with the Cybermen. Now, the Cybermen... Uh, have uh, once again uh, evolved into a new uh, uh, form of themselves, and this is the one the form you see for quite a while. Uh, even uh, it, they uh, improve on it a little better in the 80s with uh, Peter Davison and, and going forward there, uh, but it's pretty much that same design, the headset and everything, it pretty much stays like that, and uh, you see them again in uh, uh, Tom Baker's era. And then that's it, you know, uh, Pertwee never uh, encounters them through his uh, series, except I guess if you count five doctors, he finally does. <laughs> but uh, within his own series, his doctor uh, never uh, goes up against them. So it's kind of strange that they introduced them and maybe they thought, well, we had them way too many 
times and they were tired of them and retired it for a while. I don't know, but this look you see here is kind of what uh, you see in the eventual uh, uh, Tom Baker adventure. So anyway, uh, so they got their basic plant, uh, plot, sorry. Uh, and uh, the thing of it is, is that all the other Cybermen uh, stories took place in the future. Even the first one is a distant future uh, where they had a, you know, you know the, 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 with Mondas and then um, uh, the moon base and all that. It keeps going further and further into the future. Now, all of a sudden, we're in what at the time was pretty much contemporary times. At least they mentioned it's the 20th century. Uh, and here's these more advanced Cybermen. And I don't know that it, and they know who the doctor is. Uh, so it's they've met him before. So I guess we have to conclude in some kind of way that Cybermen have time travel. Uh, in their abilities, but it's never really mentioned as far as I know. I may, may, perhaps I missed it, and if I did, correct me. But uh, this is a kind of this is kind of odd, and I, I think it's perhaps uh, something they kind of uh, made a misstep on. But the only way to correct it is well, uh, they had some sort of access to time travel. Uh, perhaps they did a, a slingshot around the sun with a starship, <laughs> or they had a DeLorean. I don't know. You know, and uh, that's how they did it. For whatever reason, here they are, and they're going to invade the Earth. Now, it, it could be a thing where they're going to change time and that sort of thing, but it's just not mentioned within the story, and I guess they just didn't think of it. But what have you, uh, there it is. Now, uh, this one in particular, because it has a, a bit of an iconic image from Doctor Who, where eventually when the invasion begins, you see the Cybermen marching in the streets, and uh, so it's 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 a cool image, uh, and they're saying it's hundreds of them. Well, it's what maybe six, <laughs> and you just you just switch the shots from different angles, and you have these guys marching around, and it looks like hey, there's a lot of Cybermen around, but it's the same ones over and over. But it works, and uh, so uh, it's a happy little adventure at times, which is kind of odd because there's really horrible things that are about to happen, and yet they play this little song. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by now they have Zoe. Now Zoe is, uh, of course, probably one of the most cutest <laughs> companions, <laughs> bar none. But uh, she's she's a girl from the future, and then you have Jamie, who is from the past. So it's kind of an interesting back and forth between the two there. But Jamie, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe there was some story about him uh, getting sick or injured. But uh, uh, about halfway through, he's out. Uh, he uh, he uh, he gets shot. At one point, he even takes a nap. But I think uh, what he gets shot in one of the uh, uh, battles, and uh, so he has to rest up, you know. And then he's fine at the end when they go back to the pasture and get in the TARDIS. So, <laughs> so well, I guess something went there where Fraser Hines just couldn't complete uh, the shoot or what have you. And so uh, you just, you know, had Zoe. And Zoe, uh, of course, with her uh, superior knowledge and computer skills and whatnot, that's on display here, and she even helps... Uh, the military and how to fight the Cybermen uh, invasion fleet with their missiles and so on and so forth. And uh, so uh, she's uh, a practical one. This is another example where they keep saying we're now with the new, uh, you know, Jodie Whittaker doctor and kind of trashing the past of Doctor Who as being nothing but misogynist and the girls were just there to be pretty. Well, they were pretty, yes, but they weren't just sitting around asking the doctor questions and screaming. Uh, uh, even uh, Victoria, like I mentioned before on Moonbase, actually came up with the means by which they could fight back with the Cybermen. It's just a lot is just ignored for the purposes of a political narrative, and it's often false. So uh, you know, Zoe was uh, uh, very uh, uh, important here on how they battled the Cybermen. So uh, and once again, this crops up. <laughs> So the uh, the villain, uh, besides the Cybermen themselves, of course, is Tobias Vaughn, who uh, makes quite the impression. As far as uh, these days, you'd probably want to figure out how to bring him back. He ends up siding with the Doctor at the end, mostly out of his own. Uh, his ego is, is uh, trounced upon by the Cybermen's betrayal of him, which he knew was coming. So it kind of kind of falls off at the end there that he kind of goes nuts when it's not. But it's basically he's really upset that his own plans didn't quite work out rather than uh, this to Cyberman. He says, all right, I'll join you, Doctor, because I hate them. <laughs> so, okay, whatever. <laughs> but the rest of it about how smug he is and everything, you know, Packer, his henchman Packer. <laughs> 
<laughs> then when he gets upset, you know, the Packer, wait a minute, how's that going to work? Don't question me, Packer! <laughs> and so, it's a good job all around. So he's, I, I think he's one of the more memorable uh, uh, villains that uh, the Doctor went up against, even though it's a one-and-done thing. So uh, the, 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 that's some of the good highlights about it. And uh, so... Uh, all around a good uh, adventure and romp and uh, a bit of a, a departure from the usual, oh, there's a base in trouble. The last time it was the Cyberman's own home or tomb, <laughs> but it became a place in trouble because of <laughs> uh, here the whole planet's in trouble. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, uh, and this is one of these things where it, it comes up to where it's pretty uh, obvious that an alien invasion had taken place. So the idea that the, uh, the concept of aliens or, or Cybermen in future Doctor Who episodes would seem like it wouldn't be as shocking as it should be portrayed, but oftentimes it is. When he says, well, don't you remember when the Cybermen invaded London? You know, and I says, you know, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, later on, it's just sort of uh, hinted at, I think, that the time war changed things. So some of the old Doctor Who adventures may not have happened. Who knows? And then you could, uh, but you could also argue that perhaps the, t the Cybermen being in that era was some sort of mishap with uh, the time distortions that the time war caused and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I suppose you could just insinuate that, but uh, no one's really fully stated it in any of the new adventures. So. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But, so anyway, uh, but a, a significant uh, episode for our adventure for the Doctor here with uh, the, the establishment of UNIT and the Brigadier and, of course, another uh, evolutionary look for the Cybermen and all of that. Interestingly enough, with uh, the Brigadier, and they do refer back to their first adventure involving the Yeti uh, in the underground. Here, the uh, Cybermen are also underground in the sewers. <laughs> So, I don't know, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, but here they did uh, have more location shots, uh, probably not as much as it would look, but the, you can do that with, you just change the angle, you take a shot here and take a shot there and make it look like, oh boy, you're all over the place. But a lot more than Web of Fear did, but it didn't matter for either. Uh, I mean, like I said, it makes it look like it's a lot more, but even in Web of Fear, it worked for what it was. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just, it's all within the performances and the writing and the plot. And if you don't have access to uh, a lot of locations or just can't afford it or what have you, uh, you can make it work. And old Doctor Who proves this time and time again. So you can't just always blame everything on not having money. Uh, that's just not true. So there you go. Uh, Doctor Who and the invasion. That... Uh, kind of fizzled at the end. <laughs> Cybermen didn't really figure this out. <laughs> and neither did Bond. But they always believed the, the other one was superior. And in the end, no, uh, they weren't. So there you go. Doctor Who and the Invasion. Uh, yeah, five-star rating. It's a fun one. And more times than not, that's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for the next one <laughs> will be the final adventure for the second Doctor, and that one, uh, well, I haven't rewatched it just yet, but it, it sticks in my memory quite a bit, and that one, I think, is a masterpiece. So we'll deal with that one next time around for reviewing classic Doctor Who. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, why not like and subscribe? And for those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And while you're here, yes, check out that link description below. That'll take you to my mini stores that have plenty of goodies.